Hello everyone and welcome to my first official From the Depths video and tutorial. So as I've done in the past, you will be able to find uh, timestamps in the comments and or possibly in the description to navigate the guide easier because I will be covering breadboards quite in depth. Haha. <laughs> so what are breadboards? Breadboards are basically like programmable blocks that don't actually use a programming language per se. Uh, it's a graphical interface, it's visual, and all you need to get by is baby math, like middle school and high school level math. I'm a humanities guy and I more than get by with breadboards. Um, and that's why I believe everyone can learn and use breadboards. So first of all, you're going to need to pick a breadboard because there are two kinds of breadboards. The first one is in the control tab right here is a standard breadboard. And the second one is the AI breadboard in the AI tab. There we go. The differences. Basically, as you can see right now, the AI breadboard needs an AI connection. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Now, that's technically a weak point but there are options that are only available on the AI breadboard that are not on the standard breadboard. So if we look, you can press Q to access the interface. And as you can see here, we've got a certain number of options and we have the circuit board basically, which is where you do your air quotes programming. On the AI breadboard, you'll notice that there is primary target info and steering point info, as well as the behavior selector and the maneuver selector. Those are really useful options, and we'll get into them later. All right, next is how do you even use the interface and get it to do stuff? Well, as I said before, you have all your components here on the right side. So if you just left click something, boom, it appears. And it, start off, it starts off selected, and you can tell because it's highlighted green. If it's selected, then you can right click anywhere on the interface to move it around. You can hold it down if you want to. And to select a different component, well, say I added a second constant here, the new constant is selected. I just left click the other one, and now I can move this one. Now you'll notice there is a little pin here on the right side. Pins on the right side of a component are always outputs. And if, for example, I put in this component here, the math evaluator, you'll notice it has a pin on the left side. Now pins on the left side are inputs. And if you mouse over them, like I'm doing right now, you can see that you have a tooltip that actually tells you what the pin is for. In this case, the first pin here is variable name, uh, name A. So A here times B, whatever I put in here will correspond to A and would be multiplied by B. So if I were to change this constant to two and this one to three, now notice I need to add a second input because I don't have an input for B right now. So now I do. Now you left click the pin and you can either right click straight on the on the component or you can right click the pin to control more precisely what is being connected. Now you'll notice the number here is a number there that tells you what's being outputted. So this is important because for a math evaluator, it's not necessarily super obvious and this can be used to debug your breadboards. So if I connect this one to this one, you'll notice, ta-da, it says six. And we have created a basic calculator with a breadboard that multiplies the first thing with the second. That's it. So we've made a breadboard that calculates, you know, two times three equals six. That's very nice and all, but it's not very practical now, is it? So here we're looking at one of my fancy hover tanks, and I'm gonna show you the first very practical example. Now, this trick is particularly useful on anything that broadsides, uh, say ships or a hover tank in this case. So if we get on inside the AI compartment of my vehicle, you will notice I have one, 
two and three AI routine cards. And if we go in here, you'll notice I named them sharp right, shallow right, shallow left, and sharp left. And if we look in here, you'll notice there are different angles. Um, and the tooltips is actually nice enough to tell you which side is which. So um, a positive angle is a right broadside and a negative angle is a left broadside. Now, why is this useful? Well, this is the shallow right and this is the sharp right. So the angle is different. So an angle below 90 will get you closer towards the enemy, whereas an angle above 90 will get you further away. Now, this is nice because you can control your range and how high or how low of an angle or shallow of an angle you're keeping towards the enemy while controlling your range. Now, you can still use the minimum distance and maximum distance so that at a certain point, your vehicle will turn around completely and try to maintain range above everything else. But using this trick, you'll be able to switch the AI in order to control range without having to go straight away or straight at the enemy. So you need to set up those uh, AI routines. Now you can do this with any kind of AI. So for example, you could have a bombing AI and say um, a broad sighting AI and you could make your vehicle uh, do strafing runs and then you know circle the enemy for a bit longer and then do another strafing run and so on and so forth and this is done using the breadboard how do you do this well i've deleted the section where i select the behavior of my vehicle don't pay attention to the right side this is i'll actually get into these examples but later so how would you go about selecting whether to close the gap or uh, get further away from the enemy using a breadboard and how can you tell whether the enemy is on your left or on your right so that you don't make you know a full 180 in a in a fight in order to just you know adjust your broadside angle that's why we have four so the first thing that's really important and that's why i tend to use um, ai breadboards is the primary target info component so we're going to put that down and what this corresponds to is information to the vehicle that is currently being targeted by the AI on the channel on which your breadboard is connected. Now, in this case, I only have one AI and it's gonna target things based on, here it is, the target prioritization algorithm. So whatever you set there, uh, and that's the topic for another video, I suppose, but whatever you set there will determine how your AI chooses its main target. And based on that, you will get that information relayed here. So the first pin is, is there a target? If that's zero, you're outside of combat. If that's one, you're in combat. That's basically what this means. The second pin is the target distance. Now that's getting interesting. The third one is target altitude, which could also be useful, and it's going to be useful in another setup. And finally, we have target bearing relative to your own vehicle in degrees. That's basically where the vehicle, where the enemy vehicle is relative to you, which direction. This is very much, is it on the left or on the right? So first of all, we're going to use a math evaluator. And brace yourselves this is gonna get a little bit complicated but not really okay how can you tell if the enemy is on the right uh, on the left or on the right or on the raft which is somewhere I don't know <laughs> anyway well you use target bearing now we're gonna need an if expression like so and I froze the vehicle, so my caps lock is on. If, open parenthesis. Now we're going to check the angle. And we're going to need an input for that. And we just need the one input for now. And that's A. If A is less than zero, 
then, comma, one. If not, zero. Close the parenthesis. What does this do? Well, if I feed target bearing into there, and it's less than zero, that means the enemy is on the left side of the vehicle. That's just how from the depths operates, right? Zero is straight in front, anything positive is on your right, like on a typical table, and the negatives are going towards the left. So if it's less than zero, A, which is the first pin here, comma, and then the first number, or anything. You could put a variable in here. In fact, I often do. You can see that there. It's going to output one. And then comma again, zero. That is if the condition is not true. So open parenthesis, your condition, comma, whatever you want to be the value if the condition is true, and comma, whatever you want to be, want it to be if your condition is false. So if I do that, I can have a signal of one if the enemy is on my left. Well then, behavior selector, I want to send this one if the enemy is on the left. Boom. If the enemy is on the left, I set up a behavior for a left broadside. This way my vehicle don't, doesn't do a half circle to get into broadsiding angle. But wait, there's more, because I said this was to control range. So this is actually a little bit early. We're going to remove the linkage. And we're going to add another math evaluator. Bear in mind, you could actually do this with a single math evaluator because you can have an AND expression in there, and you can have a second condition. I'm going to put it as a second evaluator just to make things a little bit, you know, cleaner, but you can definitely do it that way. So now what we're going to do is evaluate the max range of our vehicle or broadside, or at least the range we would like to, you know, start getting closer to the enemy uh, if we're past that range. Now, here's where it gets interesting. I'm going to use B, and I'm going to say if B is more, or actually we have shallow left there, which is the, um, the expression or basically the vocabulary I use to remind myself that shallow is, you know, getting away from the enemy. So if I want to get away, that's because I'm too close. So if B is less than, say, I don't know, 1400 meters, then one, if not zero, that's it. And actually this is wrong. I went a little bit too fast. I'm going to say why A? Because there's two conditions, right? A could be one, but it could also be zero. And I'm going to put this here. So B is my range, and my range I get from target distance. And B is this pin. Boom. Now it's able to determine whether the condition is true, but it doesn't know what A is. A is whether or not the enemy is on the left. So in this case, I have two conditions. If the enemy is on the left, then output one. If not, zero, nothing happens. If the enemy is also 1400 meters or closer, then it outputs A. Why am I doing this? Well, if I don't do it this way, then if I put one here and I connect it to shallow left, Anytime the enemy is within 1,400 meters, it's going to go for a left broadside. That's not what I want. I want it to be both if the enemy is on the left and if it's within 1,400 meters. Turn this on. So by putting in... And it's not working for whatever reason. Okay, there we go. So if I put in A, then A can be 1 or 0 depending on whether the enemy is on my left or not. And it turns out if I feed one, 
into this, it's going to activate this behavior. Now I just need to do this three more times. So again, if a is less than zero, then one, if not zero. And then again, if B. Now this time I'm going to say, for example, I want to stay within 15 to 1400 meters. So if it's greater than 1500 meters, A. If not, zero. Behavior selector, sharp left. Feed this in there, add my input. Now this can be used multiple times, just like this, and then connect it to that. And, oh, I didn't connect that. I noticed because there should be numbers here if it's working and there were no numbers here. So in this case, it's the angle and boom. And now it's able to manage it, its range on the left side. And I could show you basically I would do the opposite for the right broadside. If A is greater than zero, then one, if not zero. And then I just repeat this, but I use the right side instead, for example. And that will make my vehicle select its broadside angle based on range and where the enemy already is. Now, you can use a value different from zero in order to create a preference. For example, I could go A is less than minus 30. I change this one as well for minus 30 and minus 30. Now what this does, that means up to 30 degrees on the left okay actually i'm going to put up a paint picture on your screen about now starting from 30 degrees on the left it will treat the enemy as being on the right of your vehicle this means if the enemy is roughly in front of you but not clearly on one side or on the other it will prefer going for a right broadside now this is kind of nice because this means that if your vehicles are kind of headed towards the enemy but not you know decidedly left or right they will prefer one side which means that your vehicles will all broadside in the same direction which means they're less likely to come you know face to face and as long as you have different ranges they'll just stay together and fire at the enemy. Now, bear in mind, this could also mean that your vehicles are um, one behind the other and trying to fire through each other to hit the enemy. All right, so this video is already about 20 minutes. So I'm going to split it and make it part two where I take you through more examples, which will help you understand things like this, this crazy stuff. So PIDs, making dodgy behavior, that kind of stuff. I will take you through that bit by bit. So if you found this helpful, please consider liking and subscribing for more from the depths content. And thanks for watching. Bye bye.